and he's from uh, Argentina, on that side of on that side on, on that side of the wall, really, um, are religious people, and I believe really he will actually move the Catholic faith to another level. I definitely trust that he will guide us well. Thank God we had a new Pope, and it's like all we need to do is to pray for him, that let the good old, let the good God strengthen him and give him the right leadership qualities as a spiritual leader to uplift the people as a standard of being the, the spiritual. Yeah. I feel happy because from what I've heard, he's a good Pope. He came from a religious country, though from a poor background, but um, he's so religious down to earth. I even heard that he cooks for himself, which is very rare. Um, he doesn't live in a palace like um, the, the rest. He lives on his own. He does things for his own. Um, and what is surprising is most people, we the people, um, depend on their prayers. But instead, he said we should pray for him. What else do I say? We just thank God that he has given us a pope and we pray for him that God will strengthen him, that he will be able to guide us through the right path. Those were views of people about the, the new pope, Pope Francis. We are all fascinated and we are all elated about the election of a new pope. But we should also pray for him that God will guide him in this difficult task. It's a noble uh, task, but it's also a task that has its own challenges. On that same night when he appeared in the balcony, he asked for our prayers, and our prayers should go along with him each step of the way. It is my prayer that God will guide him as he leads 1.2 billion Catholics all over the world. And he is also a figure not only for Catholics, but for many other people. So it is our prayer that God who has chosen him for this task will be his leader and his guide. We are going to break and when we come back we'll look at our readings.
when when popes are made they take up a name for example when benedict uh, who was uh, cardinal joseph Ranz ratzinger uh, when he was made pope in 2005 he took the name benedict the 16. francis has also taken that name and he's been a man who has uh, been uh, very devoted to saint francis of assisi and you all know the prayer of saint francis of assisi we are told that uh, cardinal Jorge Mario Bergoglio in this prayer all along in his priesthood and in his journey to the papacy. And you can pray along, it's a wonderful prayer that this Pope has used all through his life. Before Pope Francis was elected, uh, most of you had many names, many possibilities among the 115 cardinals that entered into conclave. We have heard the names of Cardinal Toxin of Ghana, uh, the Cardinal in Milan. We also heard about the Cardinal from Canada and many other Cardinals. But it is God who chooses. Before uh, Francis came, there was this piece about this Cardinal from Canada, which will now uh, play to you. Uh, these were just speculations. But as God would have it, we now have Cardinal Jorge Mario Bergoglio. But take a listen to this piece. Few people understand the Vatican better than John Allen, a senior correspondent for the National Catholic Reporter based in Rome. When Pope Benedict announced his resignation, John started doing his homework on the cardinals who will most likely be considered for the job. This is Habemus Papabili. Okay, John, Mark Ouellette, 68 years old, fellow Canadian of mine, currently the prefect of the Congregation for Bishops. What do we need to know about Mark Ouellette? Well, first, let's start with the case for Mark Willett as a possible pope. Uh, one, he has an extraordinary uh, intellect. I think many people would see him as cut from the same sort of cerebral cloth as Benedict XVI, comes out of the same theological circles, the Communio School, founded by then Father Ratzinger in the years after the Second Vatican Council. So an extraordinary thinker. Second, uh, a guy who in his own biography sort of brings the first world and the developing world together. Twelve years off and on in Colombia as a missionary, somebody who has traveled widely, knows the situation facing the church in the far-flung corners of the earth, speaks six or seven languages comfortably, a real cosmopolitan. Uh, and third, he's also somebody who knows where the bodies are buried uh, in the Roman Curia, having put in two stints in the Vatican, one in the Council for Christian Unity, and now, of course, the all-important Congregation for Bishops. And Sebastian, I can assure you that if you're looking to win friends and influence people in the Catholic Church, having the power to name bishops is a pretty good way to do it. That makes a lot of sense. A lot of people are concerned about reforming the Curia in some sense, the structure. Is Mark Willett capable of doing that? I think that's the 